Uh, our next Connect Talk presenter is with Coursera, a local company that has developed a platform for online education. Coursera was named one of the top 50 disruptors of 2016 by CNBC. Please join me in welcoming Coursera's head of global communications, Arunav Sinha. Thanks, Mark. Uh, very excited to be here. It's actually on two sides, so I'll speak from this side so I don't block your view uh, because I got some slides. So the previous session was great. Some fantastic questions from the audience. Glad that I was not answering them. Uh, but we'll start. <laughs> Uh, be generous. Uh, yeah, beyond the campus walls, and that's basically symbolic of how technology is now invading our world in good ways and bad ways, but in the case of education, it is a lot about breaking the barriers and taking the education out of campus to actually workplace in your life. Um, and in our view, in Coursera's views, the way we think about learning is is actually the future of work and future of learning are converging. For a long time, the future of work and future of learning were two different paths. It coincided in certain ways, but now what we are seeing is actually a good convergence and why that is happening. For that to happen, uh, we need to understand the rate of change. And Thomas Friedman wrote a powerful book, Thank You for Being Late, in which he talked about you know, human adaptability vis-a-vis -vis the rate of change, which has been talked a lot in this conference as well, uh, is, our, our ability to learn and adapt at the rate at which technology is changing is actually decreasing, and we are here right now. Uh, and how we will actually cope up with this rate is one of the big things about that is education, skills, learning. Those are one of the ways in which we will sort of uh, adapt. And why some of these changes? Means we're clearly seeing some of the big trends like big data, cloud, artificial intelligence, automation, social, these, these changes are profoundly impacting the way the work is happening, businesses are changing, customers are changing, and therefore expectations of people and consumers changing. And that has a lot of impact on the workforce and, and, and the way we skill ourselves. Uh, while we look at all of that, there are some sort of big forces happening around the world. It means on one side, we have an impact of automation where 400 people at a conservative estimate from McKinsey are likely to be impacted by automation in the next 10 years. It means they can actually be automated even now by demonstrable technology. And these are at various rates and broadly at about 50% in most major economies across the world. Obviously countries like India, it is a little higher because you have much repeatable process happening out of India. In a country like US, it is slightly lower, but by and large a major problem across the world. On the other hand, while there is an impact of automation on the workforce, there is also a lot of people entering the workforce. Now that creates a twin problem. You have a lot of jobs going away because of automation. On the other side, you have 300 million people entering the workforce across the world. Uh, you know, obviously India, 100 million, China, 60, even US, about 40 million. And in certain countries, we have a different problem, like in Japan, like in Russia, you actually have a workforce decline. Now, in both the cases, um, the complexity and sociological impact of these can be pretty profound. Uh, let's look at the GR, which is, which is defined by uh, uh, World Bank as global enrollment rates uh, in higher education. On an average, about 40% of the world's population has access to higher education, which is actually anything in tertiary education beyond, beyond high schools. And in country like US, it is as high as 86%, but on the other side, you have countries like India, which is as less as 25%, so, which means only one out of four people actually go to higher education, uh, which creates a huge amount of problem in itself because you have 100 million people entering the workforce who do not go to higher education. They don't have skills to necessarily survive in this high intense, competitive, technology-ridden environment. What will happen? In, in itself, it's a time bomb. Uh, Russia has a different problem and China has a different problem because in Russia, it is the access to higher education is high, but uh, the quality of education is not equitable. It's not as good as, let's say, in a country like US and most of the Western Europe. Uh, so keep those trends in mind. And then when we look at education, 
uh, what's happening with education, which has traditionally been seeing healthcare, education have been sort of slow to catch up on the digital wave. But what we are now seeing that the best education is actually available to everyone in the world right now. It's not like a vision five years from now. It was when Coursera started and a couple of more companies have started. Uh, and that's where you saw this New York Times doing an article about sort of the year of MOOC. And then there was um, uh, the, the MOOCs are dead. All those facts, it's gone through. And, uh, and what we are actually seeing now some very interesting, innovative work happening in unlocking access to millions of people. And I'll show some examples how Coursera is doing, some, some brilliant work happening across companies, universities, as well as companies doing that. Uh, we look at it, uh, this sort of entire ecosystem, and why this path is converging, and that is actually driving some of our strategy, which is how do we look at connect learners with educators and employers all at the same time? On one side, uh, learners sort of what they need. They need good education and credentials that they can actually take it to the employer to actually find jobs. On the other side, universities, which have traditionally, if you look at top university, has been accessible to very few, very privileged few like in this room. Uh, but if you look at globally, uh, you know, top universities have not been very accessible to the world population. So they also want to increase their access dramatically. And they can do that not by building new university, new campus. It's just not possible. You cannot teach 100 million people in India by constructing new universities. That's just not possible with just less than 2% investment in education. Uh, on the other side, employers want to have huge amount of say. Uh, employers are the ones who recognize the talent and the credentials, and they want to have a say in what they need to be taught and what we need right now, especially at a time when they themselves are struggling to hire talent. At a time when they themselves cannot think about hiring and firing because talent is just not available. Silicon Valley is a great example where you just can't hire people. Enough. So what we need is sort of connecting all of them through this platform uh, in a big way. University wants to teach the world, learns want to learn and prosper. On the other side, uh, employers are looking to transform talent. And how do we sort of bring all of these together. Different companies approaching in different ways. We approach this uh, both in the case of by partnering university as well as uh, companies like Google and um, Amazon and Intel, et cetera, by bringing a lot of industry credentials also on the platform. Uh, these are some of the top universities, not widely accessible. It means if you look at these are all in top 200, not been widely available. Together they would be teaching like in a year, less than about 200,000 people in the world. Now imagine if you are able to unlock that access to millions of people around the world in an affordable way. The question of accessibility is not just giving access to education, but how do you do that in an affordable way while keeping the quality of education high? And that's where technology plays a big role. And it is sort of challenging those primitive notions of online learning that this is not high quality, you just don't get access to community or professors. It is really challenging, and I'll show some examples of that. Uh, it is also reflective in the way users are consumer behavior is changing, learner behavior is changing, and this is also reflected, just not about Coursera, but it's also indicative of the way the world is changing its learning behavior. We are seeing huge amount of growth across many geographies, on an average about 30 to 35 percent year on over year growth. Coursera alone is adding about half a million learners, half a million, we don't call it users, we call it learners, half a million learners a month, about six million users a year. Uh, currently we are at 36 million and we have about eight million of those coming from the US. And on an average we see that, you know, on US it is about uh, global average is a little higher in the US is 35, global average is 32. If you go to India, it is 28. You go to China, it is, you know, like 30. So in emerging economies, more younger people need access because they themselves are struggling to get the right skills to succeed in the workplace, and therefore we're getting a lot more younger. On the US, on the other hand, traditionally, uh, and we would like to break through, and this is a challenge for all system platforms like us, we actually start, we seeing predominantly people who are coming to our platform are already quite educated. Mm -hmm. And that's not where we want to be. We want to go and break, to go to people who traditionally have only high school education to come and actually start doing stuff. And that has started to change now. Uh, 
I wanted to give you some sort of insight on what people are learning, uh, both in consumer and enterprise. I Means we clearly we see a big chunk of them uh, on the consumer side uh, coming in business tech and data, and that's where predominantly. On the other hand, you have all these sort of uh, uh, social science and art and humanities where we have a big long tail and we want to be a platform which teaches both business tech and data as well as uh, uh, humanities but we actually see a lot more in business tech and data at now and on enterprise we see a fairly good chunk on business data and IT but on the IT side clearly enterprise uh, has a heavy bias in terms of learners uh, in California we have about one point so out of our 8 million learners we have about 1.5 million learners coming from, and it's not a surprise, right? It's computer science, data science, and business equally divided across our uh, mix, and the rest of them coming on humanities. Uh, currently, the way, uh, I think, I just didn't want to show this, what we offer, but how this is becoming more accessible to people. Um, you know, you typically looked at online platform through which you can actually come and just do a course which is great, you want to learn a skill and you want to move on and do something else and that's totally fine as well. But then a lot more de learners demanded, oh, I actually need to master a skill. I want to become a data scientist and I cannot do that by just doing a mere course. I need a more intense experience. And that's how this concept of specialization, different companies are approaching it differently but we actually bunch uh, sort of uh, jewels, pearls in the jewel, uh, bunch them together and actually create a much more intense experience and different colleges and different universities are also experimenting with this. Then we have what we call master track certificates which is basically, uh, you know, online for a long time was, oh, it's a passive experience. I only go watch a bunch of videos, I'll do some assessments, but I don't get high touch experience from professors, faculty and peers. So actually, you now have the option to do that in a sub-degree space, which is master track. You can actually do fairly intense, like in Digital Market University of Illinois, to another course, let's say, in the area of finance, to data science, et cetera. You can actually do a full-fledged course with high-touch experience, along with, and finally, degrees, which in itself is a, you know, degrees has been a very interesting space. For the long time, people said online is not where degrees is going to move. And actually, I'll show you examples, some of the world's best Ivy League institutions are moving online because they understand that if they don't do that, they're not gonna get the right audience. And they also want to amplify and, and, and expand their brand. So currently we have about 2,900 courses, 300 specialization, 12 degrees, other platforms sort of similar, but we are by far the largest uh, as of now. This I wanted to show you specifically, and this has changed a lot in the last three to four years is how top quality degrees, these are degrees in top 100, which is actually moving online. And universities have been fairly careful about not moving degrees. They thought, okay, online is fine, I wanna do courses and specialization, but when it comes to degree, I wanna offer them only on campus, and that's changing. That's totally changing, but why that is changing is because technology has caught up. Now, because degrees are their crown jewels, and they only want to give it with high quality academic rigor, high touch access and all of that. So this is basically all the top universities including Penn, which has now uh, started masters on, on a platform. These are all top 200 universities worldwide and all within sort of 25 to 30,000 range. Compare that with about 200,000 that you will actually pay. Same credential, same faculty, same alumni network, same career services and all of that. So what we see, the classrooms are changing and how that is changing, it is no more about, oh, um, I don't get to interact, I just watch a TV, why don't I just go and do that on YouTube? No, on platforms, different companies are approaching differently. On what we are seeing on our side, we've integrated Slack, Zoom, you actually have office hours with the professors. You can collaborate with somebody in Ethiopia to somebody in Asia to somebody in Europe. And you can do all of these projects using uh, Technology, we have started doing things like auto grouping where you can actually go out and do your discussions and come back in the classroom and discuss it. Uh, all of that and plus we have used a lot of technology to improve your learning outcomes itself. Uh, what we found, which is counterintuitive, we thought in short form courses, people will be doing much more mobile but actually in degrees, 80% of our learners are in degrees are actually coming on mobile, why? Because degrees are long, they want to do it while commuting, they want to do when the kids are sleeping 
and they want to learn. They are under pressure to grow, and they want to succeed, and a lot of them are using uh, mobile to succeed. So these are some of the sort of most important trends that we are seeing, which we predict. It means a lot of learning will happen outside of the campus. It actually will blur online, on campus, outside the campus. All of that will blur. It'll just be learning. It was like commerce and e-commerce. There is nothing like that. It's just commerce now. Uh, we are also seeing using a lot more power of data to actually adapt learning uh, and make it personalized for you. We are also seeing combination of university degrees combining with industry credentials. So how an Intel credentials combining with Northwestern to give you a much more holistic uh, sort of degree. And finally, um, we're also seeing sort of learning will extend not just, and it's not a one-time event, but actually happen throughout the year. Uh, so those are basically some of my initial remarks. Thank you. If you have questions, I'm happy to take. If you don't have time, I'm, yeah. Thank you. She has a question. Question. Thank you, guys. My phone or my okay? So I'm Emily Beach, a council member in the city of Burlingame. Great presentation. Um, I want to hone in on a question that, that you that you posed. That you, an observation you said is a lot of the clientele online are actually. Oh, sorry that a lot of clientele are actually some of the highest, the highly educated segment of the population. And I think a, 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 a challenge that we collectively in our society need to solve with technology moving so quickly is how as technology changes and jobs change for our workforce, for the folks who aren't as highly educated. So what are you doing in this sector um, to try to either through course offerings or partnerships, whether it's through community colleges or outreach to get folks at different levels of at different education levels retrained in some of the most innovative technology sectors, but that don't necessarily require, um, you know, different, that, that's a diverse skill set. So. I think great question. And I think uh, when we started, we thought, okay, let's bring the best quality credentials and degrees, which is like masters and bachelors, and especially masters. And and uh, you know, all, you will require a bachelor. You will require some level of intense education before to succeed on those. But we found the impact would be limited. What we started doing, a great example is that is uh, we partnered with Google to bring Google IT Cert uh, certification, support certification, where anybody with no college degree, just high school graduate. Uh, and IT support jobs are growing across the world. E even in the US, more than 200 uh, jobs are actually unfilled. You don't really need a graduate, a master degree to do that. So we partner with Google, which actually, if you can learn from Google directly on how to do IT support, then you're actually learning from the best. Now Google has actually committed to hiring, and there is a consortium, but we brought together a bunch of employers as well. If you finish this, we actually help you connect with those employers as well. And Google themselves are also hiring. What they also backed it is uh, Sundar has been kind to actually put 10,000 scholarships behind that uh, as well. So those who can't even afford that can actually take that. So you know, experiments are like that, where you don't necessarily need college degree to do every job. Uh, how do we bring a lot of those content as well online? We are working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question.